Hello everyone, welcome again to Education Tat. Here comes the next video on Flowable. Today we are going to talk about the next steps in the already created process where you need to add new models, where you need to modify some of the already existing functionality. I hope this will be fun. So stay tuned, let's see this. So uh, what we are going to do is we are going to extend the models in this application. We will be covering this uh, session in two videos, part one and part two. Up until now, we have been experiencing global very much from the perspective of someone working on cases and process. In this section, we will start to expose how it was all put together. There is a lot that could be potentially covered. So again, we'll keep it reasonably straightforward to follow. So that's why we are saying that it will be in two parts so that you can understand and discuss the things accordingly if you face any challenges. So what we are going to do is we are going to add a new process to this case. Global design is the application where all the models are created and managed. It is not the only way to work with the global models, but it is the easiest. So now we are uh, on design with the admin and test. We are landing on this application on loan, applic uh, loan application. There's a lot of information and options here and you can always return to this view by clicking the app name in the top navigation bar. What we are going to do this change part of the CMMN model and substitute the task in the final stage with a simple process BPMN that you will create yourself. So switch to the model list to cart and then when you hover the loan case model you should be able to see the details let's open the loan case so this is how the cmmn model looks like it has different stages applying for loan managing loan and closing loan so what we are going to do is since this is the easiest stage of this overall case management we are going to create a process within this. So to modify, give closing statement human task and make it a process task, you could delete it and drag, drag and drop a process task from the palette or you can just change the element type. So for that, what you need to do is you need to click on give closing statement task and then uh, within its context you will see an option for process task so for that what you need to do is you just need to see as i am just clicking on it there is some sub menu uh, which have popped up so here if you will see from here i can convert this controls to a process task All right so this is a process task now but it will be needing a process reference because so far what we have done, you just converted this task into a process, but you have not providing any reference. So that's where you will see a warning sign. I'm just highlighting with my mouse pointer here. So you can see a warning is coming here since no process reference is uh, given. So what we can do is there are two way possible. One is we can create a new process from here or we can provide a reference here. So select the sub process reference attributes of the process task in the right hand panel. So maybe from here we can choose a closing statement uh, sub task and we can provide some key. So let's provide a name closing statement and it will be a new process altogether. This will not be a process uh, which is already existing rather than we will create it from scratch. And as you must be noticing, uh, as, as soon as I am focusing out from name, this trial version of enterprise is already populating the key for me, which is mostly driven from the name that is given. But uh, you can also change it. So that's perfectly fine. Let's create this process. Once we create this, create uh, click on the create button, you will see the closing statement as open in a process designer window of the model. And from here, we can just create the process. And as you can see, the start event activity is already present and it represents how a process starts. So from here, loan case, we created this 
we change this from task model, uh, task activity, and we change it to a process. And from process, we just provided a process reference since process reference was not existing earlier. So we created a new one and it opened a new tab on this uh, global enterprise designer. To build a model, you can always drag and drop element from the palette or what you can do is you can create it from quick menu option when you are selecting any activity in the process. So since we are going to create a human task, so for that, this is the form task. And if we just click on it, what it does, it creates a user task for us. Now we can give it some name. We can give it a name like let closing statement. And this is just a label. This is for your difference. This has nothing to do with uh, an overall programming or the configuration. This is something when you are coming back and looking at the BPM flow, you should be able to understand what I'm talking about. Right. So in here, the next is we need to, we are going to make this as a very simple process. We will not making it lengthy. And for that reason, we just be closing it after this new task. For that, what you can do is you can again uh, select an end event activity. So end event activity is a little darker when compared to the start event so that it can also be visualized easily. And then on this get closing statement, what we have done so far, we have just attached a process definition, but the implementation of that is still not done. So for that, what you need to do is you need to click on this human task. You need to provide the details of a form module. For that, you need to add a reference. So since we don't have any form available for this closing, get closing statement, we need to create a form model as well. So what you are learning today, you are learning how to create a process and then how to create a form model. A new form model will be enabled. What you need to do is you need to provide some name to this form model and again key will be generated. Let's click on create. Once you do the create, you will see a blank form model is present here. We will add a couple of details here. So we can give some name or uh, a label uh, or we can just simply go and uh, drag and drop some of the component. So what we need to have, we need to have a rich text. For rich text, we just need to drag and drop in this option. We need to provide some name to this. We are saying this will be captioning full name. And then some of you might be knowing how to work on Angular. So whatever the label you are giving, there is a binding of each component. So binding starts with your curly braces, uh, double curly braces, and then you provide some variable name. And since it is low code platform, when you are providing a label, it automatically infers the same name as a binding. So that's where you can see the full name has been uh, configured on at this place, All right? Next is, since we just uh, want to change it, we want to get this name from a root element. For that, what we need to do is we need to add it this in this value. We are just capturing this information from root dot full name, and this you will understand because each JSON have different schema, and based on the schema that you are using, you need to provide the values uh, which is which are apt to this. Next is we need to add one more field, which is a date field. So this is a low code field form, drag and drop would work and this is very intuitive in terms of like those who have not worked on any um, UI framework as such. So what we can do is we can provide some option like close date. And again, same way you will see that this is taken out. And now since you know, like when you are working on any bootstrap or uh, responsive design, these are broken down into the columns and the rows similarly but if you are designing this in the flowable form model you can simply adjust your ui in this way this is very easy to manage this is very easy to implement the next is we need to let's see if there are any yeah, there are no spaces 
Next is we need to provide total repeat. So total repeat is your number type. What you need to do is we need to take a number field and put it in between here. We are calling this as a total repeat. So we have name, we have repeat and we have closed it. The next and only uh, couple of fields that we want to add, we want to provide a checkbox as well. So this checkbox we are calling contact in person. Again, its binding will be done automatically. Then there will be a responsible person which can be a risk text and this can go uh, with side of uh, contact in person. So responsible person right so in responsible person what we want to do is it would be better if the person field was a bit wider if you click on it you can change its size from here that is very easy as it is logo platform that is very easy to do and then what you want is you want this to be dynamic in nature when the contact in person is ticked then only responsible person should come so basically responsible person will be on a will be taking more space so that's where we did it like this and we want to control its visibility when the contact in person is ticked so for that what you can do is you can go to the visible visible property of responsible person and you can provide the dependency of this element onto the other one which is contact in person so what you can do is you can provide with with this uh, spark option you can click on it it will open up a, a small text box and then you can use the expression builder so what you are saying when the contact in person equals to true then this condition will be met this is the simplest thing uh, and you just want to provide this expression and say okay and I hope you must be uh, like uh, finding it very useful because for doing such kind of thing uh, it requires a lot of JS scripting to be done and that's where this is very easy and very very low code platform or the no code platform we have not uh, written anything uh, as such any code so far so that is the future actually you need to save all these things when you are working because sometimes the Chrome may not be able to handle all this in process data and it's always recommended to save your work while you are processing so as as we talked about this is a lengthy exercise and it will take another session to complete but let me quickly recap what we have done so far we connected to a CMMN model the case model and there we want to do some changes and we opted its third stage so the third stage let me just quickly open this in the loan case what we did we replaced this task with the process model and the process model we added it so far is just having one human task with the start and end activity and then we populated a form model associated to get closing statement and in there we just used five components so far one for full name another one for total repeat closing date contact in person and responsible person then we also talked about how to make responsible person visibility driven through contact in person value so we'll close this session today i'll create a part two of this so that you should be able to practice this along